Let's talk about the UART, the Universal Asynchronous Receive and Transmit Digital Communication Protocol. The way UART works is that we have two devices, device one and device two, and they each have uh, at least two communication pins. The transmit pin on one sends out the digital ones and zeros and is connected to the receive pin of device two. And that's all that's really necessary other than a common ground. Now if device two wants to talk back to device one, device two would have its transmit pin connected to device one's receive pin. What's missing here is a clock line. A clock line might be controlled by device one, and every time the clock changes, uh, device two would know to read the transmit from device one. Instead, this is asynchronous communication, so the A is very important here, and that means that device one is going to be programmed to send a, the, the bits at a certain baud rate, or bits per second, and device two is also going to be programmed to read and transmit the data at a baud rate those baud rates have to match. There are common baud rates, and in uh, PIX32 code, you can actually get any baud rate you want. Uh, but a very common one, for instance, would be 9,600 bits per second. Uh, and this is a very common rate, say, if you're going to talk to a device, so maybe device one is the PIX32, and device two is a uh, UART to USB converter so that you can talk to your computer. In your computer, when you opened up the port, you would have to say what baud rate you're using, and that would have to match. If they don't match, the bits are interpreted incorrectly, and you get gibberish. Um, so that would be a relatively slow baud. A faster baud that's common would be 115200, and um, all kind of like factors of two. There's a big table you can look up to see what are the common bauds. So, what does this mean? We're going to blink out ones and zeros from TX and read them on RX. So if we're going to look at that versus a voltage plot, so this is voltage versus time, and we're going to see the digital ones and zeros come out, um, all the, the, uh, the writes from TX to RX are going to be in 8 bits at a time. So one byte. And they'll be sent out uh, least significant bit first, which is a little weird because normally when we write a binary number, the uh, rightmost bit is the least significant. So now when we say take the number one, which is in binary uh, seven zeros and the number one, the first bit that comes out is going to be that least significant bit. So it would come out one and then zero, 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 zero. So uh, how does device two know that device one is starting to talk? There's usually a start bit. So one bit is kind of used a, a falling edge that says, start reading from me. And then there will be um, eight more bits, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there would be a stop bit that says, okay, I'm done sending this byte to you. Um, and each of these would be uh, the same size. So I drew this a little wide because I had to write the word, um, but each of these would be one cycle of whatever the baud rate was. And this would be the least significant bit, and this would be the most significant bit. So if you're looking at your binary number on an oscilloscope, uh, it's, it's kind of like flipped from how we normally write them on a board. Now, uh, this is a little error prone, because if there's noise on the signal, maybe a low bit is interpreted as a high bit because of the noise that's on the voltage. Um, so there could be an additional bit inserted in between the most significant bit and the stop bit, which would be the parity bit. Essentially, some math is done on the ones and zeros that are sent in our byte and turned into a one or a zero at the end. So the device bit would calculate that one or a zero, uh, the receiver would, receive, would calculate that bit, and if its bit matched this bit, um, then hopefully none of the bits were flipped. So this is a perfect style of uh, checking to make sure the bits were all sent correctly, but it would catch at least the fact that there's some noise causing some bits to be in error. So how do we use the UART on the PIC32? Uh, the PIC32 has several different channels of UART, 
In this example, I'm going to use UART1. And on the PIX32 MX100 uh, series and 200 series, the pins are not necessarily uh, assigned to um, these uh, peripherals, RX and TX. So looking at the data sheet, um, where we traditionally look for our pins in this list here, I don't see any U1 TX and U and RX TX. Uh, those pins are not specifically assigned to a specific pin. Instead, what we have are two tables for reprogrammable pins, one table for inputs and one for outputs. So if I'm trying to assign a pin the function uh, UR1 transmit, here's U1 TX, can take can be assigned to any of these pins, A0 and B3 and B4 and so on. Some of these pins not e might not exist for your specific version of PIC. So if I wanted to assign uh, TX to A0, I would use the special function register RPA0R and then uh, using um, microchips uh, bits format. So RPA0R bits dot uh, RPA0R equals in binary 0B0001, and that would assign this pin to this functionality. So you can see that not every pin can do every functionality, but they've tried to spread out the most common ones across different pins so that we get the most functionality of our pick. So that's how we would set TX to a specific pin. And then we would find RX1, and the input is kind of flipped where instead of looking at pins and functions, we've got functions and pins. So I'll find um, RX1 as a function. U1RX can be assigned to A2 or B6 or A4 and so on. So I'll try to set it to A2. So I would say U1RXR bits dot U1RXR equals uh, zero. Okay, let's look at some code. So in this example, which I've included uh, in the uh, GitHub repository, uh, I've written three functions, an init UART, a write UART, and a read UART. So these are kind of like the bare minimum you would need um, to get uh, UART1 to work. And in our initialization, I called the init UART function. So here's init UART, and the first thing I do is I assign the TX pin and the RX pin um, so that when we turn on the peripheral, those pins are assigned. If we forget to uh, turn on these pins, nothing will come out of any pin because um, this peripheral has to be told which pins to use. So here we set up the pins. And then uh, to get the UART to work, we have to set the baud rate. Um, so here's a calculation that involves setting the baud rate. I set it to 9600 uh, bits per second, which is a relatively slow so that we can see it on the end scope. Um, I've uh, turned off the parity bit uh, because in this application I don't expect any noise and I turned on one stop bit so that's using these two SFRs and then sometimes you don't necessarily need to receive or need to transmit maybe you're, you're uh, one device that's just sending and one device that's just reading in this case I want to do both so I turn them both on and then I turn on the peripheral. Going back into main so whenever a button is pushed, I'm going to use the sprintf function to uh, assemble an array of characters. So in C, we don't have a string. We have character arrays. And I'm going to call a function called writeUART, and I'm going to send it a pointer to that array. And this array is going to, uh, it's going to have the letter U, capital U, and then a number. And every time I push that number, I'll increment that number. And the reason why I'm starting with capital U Uh, is that our, our uh, letters and numbers are going to be turned into the ASCII representation. So here's the ASCII chart. And if I look at the letter capital U, its binary representation is 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01. So it's a square wave. Uh, so that makes it very nice for us to look at on the oscilloscope because we can look at that letter and when we see the square wave, we know, okay, that's the letter U, and then we can go from there. 
So how does the uh, right UART function work? Here's right UART. Uh, let's start in the middle. Uh, the special function register u1tx reg, uh, I can make equal to the value of a char. And as soon as I do that, it gets put into the uh, circuit inside of the PIC that is running the UART. And that circuit has four char deep buffer. So I can write up to four times into this buffer before I accidentally overwrite something. And I don't want to overwrite something, so uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll check this uh, stat register to see, is the buffer full? Because if the buffer's full, we're going to wait. Uh, once there's a spot in the buffer, we're going to put our character into the buffer. And the thing that we're sending this is uh, the pointer to our character array. So we're going to say, while the value of the pointer we're looking at is not the null character, we're going to try to print that character. We'll add one. We'll loop through the string until we get to the null character. And that's something that sprintf did for us. It terminated our string with the null character. So uh, this function is just going to sit here, and it's going to loop through every single letter in our string and stick it into the buffer for the transmitter, and then the transmitter will blink it out with ones and zeros. So this particular piece of code, when I push the button, uh, my LED is going to turn on, and I'm going to use that uh, low to high on this LED to trigger on so that we can see with the oscilloscope what happens on the TX pin. And then I'm going to blink my LED. In this case, I'm not reading anything. I included a read function here um, so that you can see what that would look like. It's a little bit more complicated. The read function takes the uh, character rate. That's where we're going to store the bytes that we get. And we're going to um, loop through every time there's something to read, put it into that character rate until we see a slash r or slash n. So we'll use that as the terminator that says uh, there are no more uh, data is being sent. So. Uh, if data is available in this special function register, we will read it. We'll check to see if it's slash r slash n. If it's not, we'll stick it into our array. Uh, and then we'll keep going. And then we're going to check to make sure we don't accidentally overwrite the whole length of our array. I'll open Nscope. And I've hooked up uh, channel 1 to my LED. So that's the uh, trigger event. And channel 2 is... Um, to my TX pin. And so you can see the TX pin is uh, normally high. And this is going to come out at uh, 9600 watts. So I'm going to zoom in and I'll turn on my trigger on channel 1. And when I push my user button, so here my LED went high. And here is the two letters that are being blinked out. So first that comes out is the letter capital U and then was the letter 1. Um, and the next time I push I should see uh, uh, letter U and then letter 1 and so on. So what does letter U look like? Uh, let's jump back to our ASCII table. Letter U is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, it comes out least significant bit first. So it should come out 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So here's our start bit. The start bit is a high to low edge. And then we have a 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So that was. Uh, the capital U, and then we should have uh, the letter 1, and then stop it, and then the, so the stop it brings us from a low to a high, and then we sit at high uh, until the next letter gets set. So what is UART good for? UART is good when um, we don't necessarily need to send data very fast. This bit rate is relatively low. Uh, it's best for when we're trying to talk to the computer and we're either talking to the serial port on a computer or a USB to serial converter. I should say that UART we generally refer to as serial. Now all the digital protocols I'm going to talk about are serial in that one um, bit comes out at a time. Um, but usually when people just say we're talking serial, they mean we're talking UART. So if you're going to talk between two microcontrollers and one is not necessarily the master and the other is a device, uh, serial is one of the easiest ways to do it.